Hey everyone, I'm in this forest. Get used to this place because I'm often in the forest. Why I'm recording this video? Um, two reasons, uh, actually three. Uh, the first one is meta meta reason. I want to do this vlog thing, so let's keep it going. Let's record some video. Second thing, it's again a meta. Uh, I work at Arkansas, it's a company I founded. Uh, we do contracting for clients consulting and we also sell products we write programming books we do workshops and we sell it to programmers and selling is not a thing that programmers usually are comfortable with I'm a programmer I used to program more but I'm still coding every day mm, and I had to learn what is selling and I had to learn what it means and at some point even before that I accepted selling as a good thing not as a bad thing so the reason I'm recording this video is because we are about to publish a book uh, actually, this book is already published because we published the beta version first. It's called Domain Driven Rails. It's mostly to Ruby programmers. So if you're not doing Ruby, uh, this is not really targeted to you. So don't worry, I will not try to sell it to you. Uh, but the concepts I will talk about today, uh, so even sourcing, that will be the topic. It, this is uh, universal, I believe, which is also a reason why I want to promote it in the Ruby community more and more. Because it's a universal technique and if you switch to other languages, you can still apply this technique. Uh, while other techniques which you, we often learn in Ruby and the Rails world are less universal. Okay, so there are two meta reasons. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't explain. So we are about to uh, release a 1.0 version, I think. Uh, overall, this will be a new chapter, a whole new chapter. I think it's about 50 pages explaining event sourcing to, uh, especially event sourcing the scope of Ruby, um, Ruby programs and Rails programs and how to use it and so on. So we record such videos like this one or we write blog posts during what we, the, the moment of time which we call the launch sequence is usually one week. Uh, we usually give discounts over this week and we try to promote our stuff during actually, we, we actually try to explain why it's worth you know reading about this, why it's worth buying, so why it's worth selling from our, from our perspective. So we publish a lot of free content. So if you think that selling overall is a bad thing and you're tired of people giving you some kind of sales offers all the time, uh, I agree that if someone just tries to sell all the time, this is not really the best way of selling. But I believe that if someone tries to sell you, they first try, need to gain your trust in a way that you know give you some free knowledge and then make an offer that maybe if you want more, you want you want you may consider buying this. But I'm not going to convince you to buy. Uh, I just want to explain the meta stuff because I believe that many other programmers are also interested in programming, but also in products. They would like to have their own products, books, workshops, that kind of products. But to the point, so third minute and I didn't even start the point. Okay. Uh, one topic which we agreed on on our team is that we want to cover the controversial topic of uh, event sourcing in the scope of whether we should apply event sourcing to the whole application or only just to, to one part of the application. But before we go there, I believe not all of you understand even event sourcing. So even event, the part about event, it means that your, your architecture in your the code could be event driven. So something is happening like order is created, you actually do create a concept, maybe it's just like a data structure called event, which is called order created. And other parts of the system, they can say, you know, whenever the order is created, please let me know because I want to update the inventory part or I want to send an email or I want to do whatever else. Or maybe contact the third party API, maybe, you know, send the postal, whatever thing. Mm, so this is event driven architecture. But if we call about, if we, which is a very cool way of decoupling certain parts of the code. So you just say, uh, this happened and everything else is like decoupled by the subscribers mechanism. But the sourcing part means that you actually build the state, actually the truth about your system data can be built from those events. So order is created, order is placed, order is confirmed, order is paid. Those are the kinds of events. Uh, order is cancelled maybe. And usually in a typical situation with relational databases or without events, you just store the last state usually. So for example, order was cancelled. That's, that's what you know uh, right now, but you don't really know the history. So with event sourcing, you, you have the history and you can actually build, you actually build from the events, from the oldest one to the newest one, uh, one by one to know what's the current state. 
obviously you don't do it like for the whole application that one application is built one event from everything you actually call you actually use a concept of streams so you have a stream of events for one particular order so if you want to just look at this one order you just build it from i don't know 20 events so the performance is not an issue uh, obviously if you have a situation when you want when you need to build from thousands of events that's a performance problem and probably something you're not doing the right design but that's details that's over, over the, the concept of event sourcing now so the, the the question I'm trying to answer here whether is whether we should even source the whole application. So if by even sourcing the whole application we mean having one stream for the whole application and then do it, then probably it's slow and probably it's not the best idea. But if we have those concept of streams, then why not? What could be the reasons when you don't want to even source the whole application? So maybe the obvious reason is that you don't really know how. And that's a valid reason. Because even sourcing as a skill requires some experience, requires some practicing. It took me a while, maybe like a year, to get used to it. Now that I know it, I'm quite comfortable with this. Uh, other reasons, but some people say, you know, uh, we have this part of the system that is CRUD, uh, which they mean by create, read, update, destroy. So it's very simple data, uh, why I would want to um, source it with events, which is something that I think brings this hidden notion, hidden message that CRUDs are easier, which again, if you're usually doing CRUDs, then they take you faster to, uh, to implement. But if you do more event sourcing, that would be the same argument. So this is not exactly this. What I did, I have prepared uh, uh, some notes, 10 reasons why people usually use uh, event sourcing. And I would like to focus on those points and think like, if event sourcing makes some sense in one in some parts of the system, then why would I would would I decide that in some parts of the system doesn't make sense? Which reasons would be uh, a good explanation? So first of all, many people say event sourcing gives you a 100% audit log. You will see every part of your system, how it was changed, usually also with some metadata like who did change that, and this is one of the reasons I think many of our clients can be convinced to even sourcing if they have some technical knowledge because they will see the whole uh, knowledge about the system and very often at some point of time we actually are asked to implement you know i would like to have an audit log because the, for the legal reasons we need it so that's something that we need so 100 percent audit log is when you have even sourcing for everything but if you don't do even sourcing for everything it's not really that reliable whether it's actually true and 100 percent so i'm wondering i'm wondering which parts of the system would be like not needed for that and i can imagine like third party which i don't access have access to obviously i have no way of saying you know what was your audit log but that's not under my control so that's kind of obvious uh, but other than that i would say audit log is very useful so why have a specific part which is not even sourced um, another reason is that when you have mm, like this hybrid approach you have some parts even driven but some are still using the last snapshot of data in your database and in those cases you have this problem that you publish events but you also need to uh, react to data changes and it kind of needs to be atomic so you don't want to inform the whole world that the data has been changed uh, if it wasn't really changed because it's very hard to revert uh, whilst when everything is even sourced this whole uh, problem disappears you no longer have the situation when when some data is actually changed without events so everything is even sourced everything goes through the events nothing to, to be changed third reason there is this problem of object relations object and relations mismatch so if you use relational databases you probably had those situations where uh, if you start thinking in objects and some nice i don't know inheritance structure composition structure whatever fancy object oriented technique at some point you want to save it to the database somehow and it's not really that easy you will see that you know you sometimes need to load much more data or you need to write some querying logic or or updating logic just to uh, you know do a simple change so there is a it's very well described in other places on the internet so i'll not go into details but you, the orm is actually part of a problem when you have this mismatch and usually you have this mismatch for non-trivial designs fourth reason it's easy to go microservices and i'm adding here serverless this is a topic i will be talking about in this vlog probably quite often because this is kind of my area of uh, my future research serverless like aws lambda or microsoft azure functions and that's true that with event sourcing you are you are decoupling those streams they usually are around aggregates or 
process managers or something else like that, you are decoupling your business entities and this means you can uh, store them in different places in your infrastructure also as microservices or even better as functions in the AWS Lambda for example which is a really good reason so why not to have this option for all places uh, in your system and just focus on, on saying like this is the part I will probably never want to have as Lambda but maybe you have those parts so maybe this point is, is not really a good argument Point number five, future requirements as I said before, I actually, I'm in the IT industry for almost 20 years now and the number of times I was asked for some kind of audit log, sometimes it's not called audit log, sometimes it's called ledger for example, uh, the number of times I was asked to implement this was quite big. It was actually like every second project I was asked for building something like this. They were usually non-trivial projects obviously. And my obvious answer, if I started without event sourcing, that was mostly, most of the time that was the case because I learned event sourcing just recently, uh, most, of the, most of my answers were like, okay, but I will just present you audit log for, from now till, fut till the future because obviously the old data, we have quite a bit problem to retrieve them. Sometimes it was okay, but sometimes it was like surprising to the clients. What do you mean we don't have the historical data? Like I need to show them. So that was a bit of a struggle. And I think I have some animals hunting. No, ani real animals somewhere here, so I need to be careful. Uh, six, event store is simpler than SQL because it has simpler operations. It's only update only. So usually for our simple developers' minds, it's much easier to understand. And I'm really scared because there are boars here. Hopefully it's not a boar. Um, seven, easier uh, to go CQRS. Mm, CQRS is the idea of having two models, writes and reads. And uh, with writes, you can have different objects. With reads, you can have different objects. I will not go into details here, but with event sourcing, it's much simpler because the writes, they change the data, they publish some events, the reads react to the events. So it's one kind of synchronized way of working, which is quite cool. So again, which parts of the system wouldn't be wouldn't I like to have secure as? Uh, now that I have some experience with having with working on full even source applications, the places where I imagine we wouldn't have the um, secure for example, would be the places I would be very uh, I wouldn't be happy with this code overall. Not a good argument, but okay. Eight number eight, still just two points left. Um, easier to do unit testing. So most of our Mm, units in our application becomes something that accepts events and publishes events or accepts events and command and publishes an event or accepts events and publishes a uh, command so some kind of you know event is the basic unit of input and output which makes it very functional so hello all the functional fans here um, I never was a functional fan but I can see why it's useful here and this is this makes it a lot easier to do unit testing simplifies deployment and maintenance because usually we need to write some upgrade scripts for CQL. It's actually people who are looking for the mushrooms. Um, that's what is nine point. And loss of data in uh, loss of data in non-event source system that was actually partially covered. We don't keep the whole history. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. So that's it. I think I will hide from the people now. And that's what I uh, have to say about this topic overall. Uh, <laughs> just bear with me for a moment. And so, as you can see, my answer is that I would uh, use even sourcing in most of the places where I can, uh, and where I can do it. But uh, and I see really not that many reasons not to do it. Obviously, I can imagine. Uh, if you enter a legacy application, you don't want to do it all at once. You just want to uh, migrate one by one. So I will not have magically even sourcing from day one. It's very hard to apply in legacy projects actually. But at some point, uh, I would like to achieve this perfect situation. Thanks for watching the video. I hope I will do more vlogs, probably in better places than that. Thanks.